Okay, full disclosure, I was going to rework the boss design for Avatar Supreme in this video, but I decided not to because god knows I've reworked the final boss of this game enough times already. Anyways... Man, I love Sonic Frontiers, and I can't wait for the final horizon. It's a shame, though. I have over 100 hours on this game, so it'll probably be really easy for me. Oh... The final horizon! This shit is hard as balls. It's so difficult that I genuinely think it brought me back to the mental state of a four-year-old for a couple minutes, specifically when I was trying to climb Crane's Tower. But there's one part of the new update in particular that everyone is talking about. Master King's Trial. In theory, this trial shouldn't be that difficult at all. It's just a boss rush against three titans before Ray Island. There's literally already a mode in the game that does this, except it has even more enemies in it, so this trial should be a cakewalk, right? Well, that's what I thought going into this, and I genuinely don't think I could have been any more wrong. There are three clauses that Master King puts over this trial that fucks you. Number one, you're stuck at the lowest stats. This didn't seem so bad to me at first. I was actually excited to fight the Titans when I was in a weakened state, because I knew that would make the fights last longer and ultimately be more fun. Well, I was right about them lasting longer. The next, and definitely the most terrible of the clauses, is that the rings will be unavailable, meaning you have at most 400 seconds to beat every titan, and if you get a hit on the way up to them, you'll lose an entire minute if you're lucky. This means that you can spend, at most, a little over 130 seconds in each fight. Ideally, though, you'll spend 100 rings on the Giganto fight, 150 rings on the Wyvern fight, and the remaining 150 rings on Knight. The final clause is also a big fuck in the ass. On hard mode, you get 12 frames per parry, basically making it impossible to reflect most enemy attacks. This isn't so bad with Giganto and Knight, but trying to fight Wyvern with this clause made me so angry I started to discover something about myself. Nah, I'm kidding, I figured that out years ago. Anyways, I hate Wyvern with a burning passion now. But seriously, this is obscenely difficult. This challenge is what Garrulous wants you to think terminal velocity is like. So what if we remade this trial into something else? What if Master King had a Titan? The lack of a fifth Titan was something that fans of Sonic Frontiers have been complaining about for a while, so I'm gonna make a new one, specifically for the Master King trial. And since this will never actually be made by Sonic Team, I can make it as complex as I want, because budget isn't really a thing. In order to not break the lore, the Titan itself would never actually have been created, and would only exist in cyberspace. Sonic Superform would also be simulated, specifically for this trial, since he doesn't have any of the Chaos Emeralds at this point. So the first thing to talk about is the design of the Titan. When I first started working on it, I thought back to the other Titans. With the new lore, we've learned that each of them is based on one of the extinct tribes of the Ancients. One with large bodies, one with a tail instead of legs, one with four legs, and one with wings. If you've played Sonic Adventure, you will know that these are all also reminiscent of the forms of Chaos. So it would be fitting that Master King's Titan would be made in the image of Perfect Chaos. So I started designing. But I quickly ran into a problem. Perfect Chaos looks like a snake. And while I could create a Titan in the image of a snake easily, there's a problem. Wyvern, well, looks like a Wyvern. And while they're technically dragons, they look like snakes. So I decided to make Master King snake-like. So I made the Titan into a Naga, being a snake from the waist down and having a rattle at the end of his tail. His arms would also be bendy, like the arm things that Perfect Chaos has. Finally, his neck will be long, and his mouth will go down the entire thing. There was one more piece of him that I wanted to design, though. Instead of just giving him an emerald holster like the rest of the Titans, I wanted to get creative with it. Then it hit me. Knight, though based on Chaos 6, is mainly based on the chess piece, Knight. This can be seen in the fact that they resemble a centaur. And the Knight piece is a horse. I took the chess theme and gave Master King a cross on his head. Alright, enough talking about design, here's the sketch. Okay, I know it doesn't exactly look like Perfect Chaos, but I think it's around the same representation as the other Titans give to their inspirations. As you can see, I decided to make him gold. I did this because Supreme is white, being the strongest enemy type that's in Sonic Frontiers. What you may not know, though, is that there was actually originally going to be a gold enemy type that was even more powerful than the white enemies. This can actually be seen in Caterpillar. There used to be a weaker, black variation of Caterpillar that would have been on Kronos Island, meaning that the Caterpillar we see in the final game is the last remaining gold enemy type. So, since this is a theoretical Titan, I thought it would make sense to use this lost enemy type for their coloration. For the weapon, I was also considering giving him a katana, but I figured that would be too on the nose of Knight, so instead I gave him a whip. As you can see, they're wrapped around his chest right now, but once the actual fight begins, he'll take them off. So, as for the fight itself, as soon as Sonic starts the trial, he's warped into the cyber palaces that he's been doing the trials in. Only this time, he's on a long strip of stone, leading forward. As you run into the unknown, you can hear the voices of several Coco getting louder and louder. 
After a few seconds of running, you can see the walls of a circular stand surrounding a large arena. There, Master King's Titan stands in the center. Coco sit in the stands, watching and waiting for the show. Meanwhile, the Coco of the four Master Pilots sit on towers raised from the middle of the stand, having front row seats to the battle. Once you get inside of the arena, the gates slam shut, and Master King lowers himself into his Titan through the triangle on its head. The lights on the body then come to life, shining a brilliant blue. The name of the Titan, King Cobra, then comes on screen. The climb then begins. King Cobra is unclimbable, and the only way to get up is by grinding up a rail that goes from its neck to its tail. As you run towards it, King Cobra will charge up chaos energy on the cross on its head. A triangle, similar to the reticle of Sonic's homing attack, will follow you around. It starts out blue, but when it turns red, you have only one second to run out of the way before King Cobra fires a massive laser of cyber energy at you. When you get close to the tail, it starts flailing around wildly to keep you from getting on. The only way to stop it is by tricking King Cobra into hitting himself in the tail with a laser, allowing you to get onto the grind rail. Once you get on, though, King Cobra will shift its back, throwing you out into the air. Then you have to homing attack balloons surrounding the area in order to get back to him. While you're doing this, King Cobra will shoot balls of purple chaos energy at you from the emerald on his head, so you have to weave around them while trying to get in close. There are only three paths to get to King Cobra's head once you get back over the arena. One is made of the electric spinny enemy things, the second is a climbing path with moving spike balls, and the third is a gauntlet of moving rings. Pick your poison. Once you get to the emerald, the battle really begins. King Cobra starts the battle by taking the whips off his chest. Like most of the Titans, in the first phase, hitting him isn't that hard. The only difference is that you do almost no damage because you're at your beginning stats. This isn't that much of an issue though, since King Cobra's health will be between Knights and Supremes, making him beatable within the 400 second time limit. The only place that he can be hit is the triangle on his head, and it's pretty easy to get to. King Cobra would have three attacks and two quick time events in the first phase. His first attack would be with his whip. White lines would appear on the screen where he's going to attack, and you'd have to weave between them in order to dodge it. In his first phase, he would do this three times, getting progressively harder to escape within each round. His second attack would be a bit more tricky. If you try to parry his whip and then attack, he'll quickly dodge out of the way and grab you. If he successfully grabs you, he'll throw you past the sand surrounding the area, and the masters will clap for him. If you manage to dodge it though, you get a lot more attacks in on his face. The third of King Cobra's attacks would be like a standard punch at first. He slings his arms back, but instead of moving his body forward at you, his arm springs forward at you quickly. This attack is easy enough to dodge, but if you can time it correctly enough to perfect parry it, you can hit the spring punch into his face, stunning him for a bit. For the two quick time events, the first would only occur if you attack King Cobra for too long. He'll catch you in his mouth and try to crush you in his mouth, so you'll have to spam A to break free of it. The second QTE would occur in the second time you get hit by King Cobra's whip. He then clashes you in his whip and starts throwing you at the walls of the arena. You then have to press A right before you hit the walls to shift your momentum and break free. You have three opportunities to do this before you get slammed onto the ground. Once you get him down to half health, King Cobra roars at the sky. He then starts to rattle the end of his tail. As he does, the visuals on the screen start to get distorted. Cooler colors mix in with the red environment, and everything starts to warp. King Cobra also combines his two whips into one. He gets two more attacks in another quick time event for the second phase. Here, King Cobra will swing his whip above his head like a lasso. After a few seconds, he'll swing the whip across the screen, but just once, with force. It's really quick, too, giving you barely any time to react and taking up a third of the screen. If you manage to dodge it, you'll be able to hit King Cobra. If he grabs you with it, though, he'll constrict your movements and hold you on the ground. He'll then charge up a cyber laser from his mouth, and you have to break free of the whip or you'll be killed in one shot by the laser. His second attack is a double spring punch. This time, you'll have to watch out for both of his hands, and if you manage to perfect parry one of them, you'll have to be ready to hit the other as well. If you manage to do both, though, you can then siloop him. When you siloop King Cobra, chains of chaos energy wrap around his body, restricting his movement. You can then grab him by the tail and throw him into the stands over and over again. To end it off, you can toss him into the sky just as his movement is released, causing him to flail around and fall back down again. The Coco then clap for you while he hits the ground with force. Once you get King Cobra down to one quarter health, his rattle distorts the screen to the point where it's upside down. The only way you can get a break from the distortion for a moment is by hitting King Cobra's tail when he's on the ground, preventing his rattling for a while. Once you fully drain his health bar, King Cobra will shoot both of his fists at Sonic. He then blocks him and flies down to his tail. He grabs him by it and then swings him around a bit before throwing him through the stands the Masters are sitting on, breaking them and forcing the Master Coco to jump to safety. Sonic then flies towards King Cobra, who shoots a blue cyber laser at him. Sonic then spin dashes on the energy itself, blasting across it like water and then slamming into the triangle on its head. He then continues to grind into the triangle until it breaks, causing King Cobra to wail out in pain. Sonic then flies down and boosts into its tail, breaking it off entirely. He then watches King Cobra fall into the abyss below, forcing Master King to flee from his collapsing titan like a coward. All of the Coco, even Master King, clap for him. Sonic is then warped out of the palace and back to Master King's tower. 
there the story proceeds as normal. And that's the boss. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video, but I really like making concepts like this. I, I plan to do more stuff like this in between working on 06, rewritten in Tale of the Coco, so if you enjoyed this and wanted more... I love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!